What's up everyone? We are on our way to Albuquerque Comic Con. We haven't been in New Mexico in a long time, so it should be a good trip. I'll be vlogging along the way. So here we stop at Blake Slaughter Burger. It's a chain in New Mexico, and there's I think there's some in Texas and Arizona as well, but they're mainly there. But basically there you can get like the green chili burger. In my opinion, it's the best burger. Especially the best green chili burger because it's actually hot and flavorful. And it's a really good size burger, so definitely if you're down there, pick it up. And oh my god, this looks so good. Even just re-watching it now and recording this voiceover it looks good. <laughs> All right, so we finally made it in here. I'll just show you guys quickly. I'm going to try to get signed. Um, so we got this here. Let's see if Bam Margera signs. I didn't see if he was doing any autographs, but I figured I'd get it just in case. And then um, for Trish Stratus, Booker T, and Kevin Nash, I have this poster of WWE Shut Your Mouth. I just figured it'd be better to do that than get a whole bunch of, you know, different things for them to sign. Just have them all sign one thing. But finally made it here. Not too bad of a drive, I think we made good time. It's dark, but in the courtyard there. The next day. All right, we are finally here at the Albuquerque Convention Center. The parking was a bit of a conundrum. Parking was actually more crazy than Denver, if you could believe it, but Anyway, we're gonna head on in. I wasn't actually able to pick up the passes yesterday, um, so I gotta go in to pick them up today. So it's gonna be a little bit of an extra wait, but it should be fun going in there. We're gonna plan to go to a few of the panels and uh, see the cosplay as well. So maybe get a few things signed if I have time, but I'm going again tomorrow. So anyway, let's head inside. It's a supernatural car. Got the DeLorean there. They actually had some of these in Colorado Springs. All right, so we're gonna try to attend the Five Nights at Freddy's one. I'm not a fan of the game, but my sister is, so we're going to check it out. I'm a little worried about this event because it might have furries and they scare me. <laughs> Maybe even worse than the bronies. Stormtroopers are going to take them out. That makes me feel better. Those are pretty good costumes. Yeah, they even have the voice. <laughs> it's not Chewbacca. Well, no, it is Chewbacca, I guess. 
face doesn't really look like him, but it's gotta be so hot in there. Surely you can do better. There was this little movie, and this production company wanted to get this thing called the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles off the ground and into the theaters. And it started, as many of you know, with these comic books. And they go, well, they explain. Well, you know, it's these turtles, they're in the sewer, and they've got this ooze that falls all over them. They start growing, and they become these large, uh, kick-ass kind of ninja turtles. And I go, I think I could do that. And so they hired me, and thank goodness they did not fire me. And so I got a chance to be with these, these wonderful people. And then third, what would you say about Kevin Eastman and Peter, Peter Laird, who created the franchise? Any positive things that they just made on you just since you met them, working with them? I don't know how involved they were with the, with the movies, but... You know. Ready? Go. Go. Okay. So, uh, I had wanted to do the other two films. I was fired. Uh, I... I know. I was fired. Uh, Steve Barron, the director, was fired. We were definitely ahead of that role after that film. Uh, I was let go of because I, much like April O'Neil, I have a very strong point of view. And contrary to what's on the internet, I did not not want to do the films because they were too violent. That somebody wrote that, and I, no, it said martial arts movie. Yeah. <laughs> Is that they totally gave up on the concept of trying to make it a balanced movie between the dark early comic book vision, which uh, was more adult in nature and the very broad cartoonish vision, which was the cartoons. I think we, you know, we tried to strike a balance of that in the first picture, and I think it worked out okay. They totally gave up on that in the second movie. I was literally told, Todd, this is direct quote, you were to write this movie for five-year-old boys, okay, unquote. I fought it, you know, I made my case. I was pretty passionate about it to the point that they started talking about the cows getting up and running. And, I, you know, so I gave up. And it's like I wrote the movie, so. But one of the things I did do was I showed up to dance with Vanilla Ice, and I was so hungover, I could not complete the scene. And I ended up having to act like I was sick, and it was just a bad news. No and so after that, they were like, no, you don't need to come back anymore. <laughs> I mean, I made the whole movie, but I didn't come back to the third one. So. We won't be hearing from Brian Toach because Brian is way too nice to be
Welcome. Are these on? Are these? I don't, no one wants to hear me. Let's make sure these are on. Hi. Oh. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Yes! I just want to give a shout out to the asshole that's running this air on us. Uh, thank you very much. It's 33 degrees outside, about 16 on this stage. So this is going to be a real short panel. I'm from Canada. 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 i Okay. Remember, I came back because you wanted to watch wrestling games, so I gave you a reason to watch, right? Yes. <laughs> I, watch, I, watch, I actually watched when, when Trish came back to watch. See? Oh, Trish, Trish killed me. Give it up for Trish. Huh? Give it up. Back to the year. Give it up. Oh, yeah, man. I, I have a question. So, a lot, of, a lot of people like me grew up watching you guys. Who did you guys grow up watching it in? Like, got you into wrestling. I was a break dancer, so I grew up watching Shabba Do. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to play in the NBA, so I was watching basketball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I watched Big John Stud. Uh, uh, you know, there's some, some drums in there. Not a lot of people. Does anybody know who Big John is? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll see some resistance. Awesome. Big yeah. John Stud. Yeah. 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 Harley, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. Is that right? Yeah. I have to go back and watch it. <laughs> I uh, grew up watching wrestling. I went to maybe like in Toronto, maybe it was Big Hot Night Wrestling. Maybe gardens. I went through time as a kid. I was a tomboy, and I hung out with my boy cousins. I wanted to be a tomboy, but be part of the boys. And I uh, always watched wrestling. Never looked at it and thought that's something I could do, of course, because there was no real, you know, role for the women. Uh, but so Macho Man was the guy for me. Well, if you know to piggyback off that, Chris, and great question. You want me to piggyback Chris now, or? Uh, yes. The yes. answer is okay. yes. That is a lot of Chris's dreams come true. They're going to happen right here on the stage at the Kiva Auditorium. Thank you, Dylan, the breakfast matter. Look at those heels. This is. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's weird. Weird. I, yeah, a big round of applause for that. All I need is confusing. Dusty Rose pretty much said pretty much plain and simple as far as what a promo was. It was about, you know, the town, you know, the guy who was wrestling the arena that she was gonna be working in. And, 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 I, and I must say, nobody nobody did that better than The Rock. Uh, I remember yeah. uh, working in Houston one night, and I remember the next night we was in New Orleans. Yeah. And the Rock had a promo, and he hit every landmark from Houston all the way to New Orleans. And it was a pop every time he said it. Like, a damn, this guy's good. Yeah. You know, it was one of those type of things. So, yeah, uh, a pro boy is just an art. I remember one time when Sid told me he had half the brain I did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I remember that pro boy. You think you're so smart? Well, I got half the brain yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> we went to Staples Center, and the Dudleys were the champions. And Scott walked up to the Dudleys and said, Hey, I really love your finish. And they were like, oh, wow, well, gee, thanks so much. He goes, can't wait to kick out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and we were pretty much out the door. <laughs> uh, as far as uh, Carl and Heath and my brother uh, coming to the WWF at that time, um, there was never really any talk about it. I remember talking to my brother about it once. As far as him coming over, and you know, he really didn't have a whole lot of interest in it. But I really would have loved to have had a chance to perhaps just to do, a, you know, a little bit of tag team wrestling uh, in WWE, just because, uh, you know, just for nostalgia purposes. But I was really out of it to the singles league at that time. And it would have been really hard for me to go from singles wrestling back to the tag team wrestling that I did for over 10 years. So.
But there's two ways. There's some stuff that's given to you, and you're like, that's gonna be like, I'm not doing that. That's not what, like, you don't feel that, right? So you can't do that out there. Then there's ideas like I, so when we were doing the storyline with Jericho and uh, <coughs> Christian and, and Amy and I, uh, Lita, uh, we led up to the point where it was all culminated two part where Jericho and I were going to be the couple, right? So we were going to be the couple before Marie's and Ms. and Kevin. And, um, and so we, we were working towards WrestleMania and literally at WrestleMania 20 on the day of, and so, and so that was the moment where finally, you know, everyone, I mean, Jericho was healed, but because of our relationship, literally, you guys organically turned his baby face, it was just, you guys were involved in the whole, you know, uh, formulation of that. We got to WrestleMania 20, and then Vince goes, you know, I think we'll just have you turn and go with Jericho, uh, with Christian instead, and we're like, like, it was just like, we thought it melt, like, you know, we worked towards something, and, and all the work, you know, all the promos and everything was like, foreshadowed and working towards something. And so that's, that's, you know, and, and me being a baby case for so long, too. But then it turned out, for me personally, you know, to be kind of healed at that point was really good. And just created one of my, like, some of my most memorable moments to come to at that point. And, you know, Vince kind of just has that, he's just like, it's time. Fans predict it, they know it, it's not that it can't be as exciting as maybe this way. And so we went that way, and so that actually worked out really well um, for, for all of us involved. All right, so uh, this happened after the panel, after the WWE panel. I went and got um, my poster signed by Booker T. He had the, the, the Texans game blaring, so I tried to you know, record around it, but that's basically what you hear in the background is a Texans game. But, um, yeah, so this is Booker T signing the poster. Okay. What's going on, dog? Okay. Who's signing this here? RVD. Yeah. I know that kid. <laughs> Cause you've had your, you had the dreads for like 15 years, 20 uh, years. You had the dreads for 15 years, 23. Years ago. 23? Yeah. Oh man. Started going 23 years ago, man. Oh man. Still got it. Yeah. <laughs> She's saying she wanted your dreads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. That's for you. All right. So we've attended the few panels. They're pretty good. One of them was the, the Friday Nights of Freddy kind of sucked though. We couldn't even hear the guy, <laughs> and like literally someone asked him like, "Oh, can you take louder?" And he he kind of did for a little bit, but then he didn't. I got um, Booker T to sign the WWE poster, and I was gonna go to Bam Margera, but he wasn't there. So I think I'll just do mostly autographs tomorrow. Uh, we got one more event, so the costume contest, which is what I wanted to do, and then uh, that'll probably be it for today. And then tomorrow I'll just knock out all the. The rest of the autographs and the rest of the photo ops that I have planned tomorrow. So we're going to grab something to eat here in downtown Albuquerque.
back in the hotel. We just wrapped up the first day of Albuquerque Comic Con. What did I think? I think overall, I think I liked it better than I liked it better than Colorado Springs Comic Con. But I would say that it's not maybe as well organized as Denver Comic Con. Like they had like the slurries kind of nearby the shops, and I kind of wish they would have separated them because it makes it going slow there really bad. But yeah, I mean, it was cool. I got I got it signed by Booker. I got my poster signed by Booker T. He was real cool. And then tomorrow, I'm going to try to knock out the rest of the autographs. Hopefully, I should be able to. Uh, it was really easy getting it signed from him. Um, one thing, another thing I noticed was that the panels, uh, we went to, what was it, three? Three panels. And you didn't have to wait in line, really, for any of them. Like in Denver Comic Con, you had to wait, you know, in these longest lines to even get into the panel. But this one... It was in this huge ass auditorium where you could just walk in there. So I like that. And yes, there's a pizza box there. We had that uh, last night. And this is like, this pizza is so good. Unrelated. It's like the closest thing to um, old Pizza Hut that I had. Um, anyway, I don't know why I went on a tangent. But, um, so that's uh, the first day of Albuquerque Comic Con. Uh, I'm just going to go by myself tomorrow. So I should be able to knock out the autographs. I'm not really interested in seeing any of the panels, but... I like the approach I took today because I was able to see some panels. I had to move a photo up around, um, but I got the photo with Kevin Nash today. And then tomorrow I got with Booker T, Trish Chattis, and then Bam Margera. So, all right, I will see you guys tomorrow. The next day. All right. Good morning, everybody, and we are at, oh shit, let me turn uh, turn that windshield wiper off. It's a little bit uh, raining here this morning, um, but anyway, so I'm back at Albuquerque Comic Con. It's just me today. My sister's staying at the hotel. She wanted to relax, so I don't blame her. Like, we were both so tired. Like, we got home, or we got to the hotel, and like, we instantly were asleep by like 9.30, because, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's not that way for a lot of other people, but especially when you're kind of like an introvert like myself, and, and uh, she is as well. It's like being around that many people is exhausting. Like even though it's like not really physically demanding, right? Like we we sat around a lot of times for three panels. We'd only stood up and walked around for a little bit, but just being around a lot of people is very um, tiring. Um, hopefully there won't be as many people if it's following in traditional con tradition, because usually it's Sundays there's not as many people. There's still a few people, but not as many. Um, I should be able to navigate things a little bit quicker, get a lot of stuff signed. So. I'm looking to get that WWE poster. I'm looking to get signed by Trish Stratus and Kevin Nash. Uh, I also have the Geronimo poster. I, I haven't shown it yet, but maybe once I get it signed and everything, I'll show everything at the end. Um, the Geronimo and American Legend poster, I want to have Jason Patrick sign it. He would, he played uh, Lieutenant Gatewood in it. He was the second, the main lead was West Studio, but he was like the second you know, leading character in it. Um, so he's he's there and I want him to sign that. Bam Margera, he wasn't at the at his booth when I went there yesterday, but I have a photo op with him today, and I'll try to get him to sign, uh, it's just like a, I just got like a magazine uh, advertisement just for like a release of Viva La Bam and stuff, so I'll just have him sign that, and I think that'll be it, so the only thing is the photo ops are kind of scheduled back to back, so I know I'm going to be in the photo op line for a little bit, so I would ideally like to get one or two autographs before I do the photo op, because I have, the first photo op is with Trish Shadis at 11.30, then Booker T, or no, then um, Bam Margera at 12.10, then Booker T at one o'clock, um, and you know I'm, I'm really, it's kind of a crunch because a lot of them are going to leave by like three or four. So um, I'm going to head in there. I'm going to get a little bit more of the, the the floor and stuff. Yeah, so let's head in on inside and hopefully I can knock these out and get it done. Thank you, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate that you like X-Men. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, my brother. Uh -huh, no problem. Thank you for coming out. Okay. <laughs>
Hi. Hi there. How are you? Nice to meet you. Ready. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, guys. I'm hoping if, if, if it's not, the line's not long. How you doing? Ready. Fantastic. Out this way. Hi there. How are you? Good and you? Oh, this is cool. Yeah. You can just like sign it right next yeah. to it or below it. Good little idea. Okay. All right. So just sign right here? Yeah. Okay. Actually, I'm going to do pink. Yeah. Stand I think out, pink's you know? more painting. <laughs> yeah, so. like the girl I am. Yeah. So you like Albuquerque. It's been great. Oh my gosh. I've actually had the best time. Like everyone's just so nice and like welcoming because I wasn't sure what to expect. I haven't been here like over 20 years. So it's been oh, really, really yeah. great. Yeah. 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 That's so okay, nice I here. I'm actually from Denver. Okay. I just came down here. But what do you think of it? Much, much cha nice change of pace, especially compared to like the Denver one. Course, yeah. It's like not as like, everyone's just like, chill, yeah, right? yeah, very chill. I, I honestly didn't even know there was none here. I, I'm from Canada, right? So I'm like, oh, there's none here? I didn't even know. Yeah, that's way far for you, man. Yeah, it was a long journey, put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Have a great day. Nice to meet you, and thank you for coming here, and even thank you for coming back. That was one of the main reasons I watched. I didn't watch in like 10 years, thank but you. yeah. Okay, I love hearing stories like that. Yeah. You know, like, it means a lot that you guys watched me as I got better, and I grew, and I evolved as a wrestler, and then you get to watch me Oh, yeah. Definitely one of the last matches, like, one of the best, in my opinion. Thank but, you. Yeah. It's my but, favorite. I think it's my favorite one. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sorry. Nice thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. No problem. <laughs> Mr. Lloyd, uh, I want, I, I'm very excited to talk to you about just the craft of acting, in addition to, uh, sorry, uh, what? The, just the craft of acting, because you're one of the few actors who was able to jump from Broadway to TV to movies, and a lot of people here don't really realize that that's, there used to be a wall of separation when you got in. If you were a Broadway actor, you were not a movie actor. If you were a movie actor, you never did TV. Um, and so, do you think that that breakdown of the wall of separation between those three crafts has been beneficial for actors? Yeah, I, I, I remember um, when I did One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. It, was, it was my first Ooh. film, and I was then in my early 30s. But I started doing theater when I was 16. You know, 17 years old, but they wouldn't have done. You know, so, and I heard this this thing that some people can't make the bridge from one area to another. And so the Kudos this. So, I just finished the con. Um, it was some good and some not so good things. So I'll, I'll start for the good things. So, first thing uh, I get there and I notice that you know there's not too many of the celebrities there, and I'm like, crap. I, wonder, I was hoping to get South Stein before the Tristratus photo op. And then um, I see that Jason Patrick is there. He's the one that I told you that was in Geronimo. He played uh, Lieutenant Gatewood. And so I had him send my Geronimo poster, which is a huge ass tube I had sticking out of my backpack. But. Um, so he signed that. The interaction really wasn't too much. It was more like hi bye. It was a, it really wasn't too much. But then while I was waiting for that to dry and like putting the two back in there, I was by near uh, another person's booth, and his name is Keon Young. I hope I'm saying his name right. I just wanted to know that his name is not Keon Keoni Young. It's Keoni Young. <laughs> I pronounced it wrong the rest of the whole video, but it's Keoni Young. But um, 
he was like, because I, I was wearing my X-Men shirt, and he noticed it, and he's like, oh, you know, are you a fan of X-Men? He's like, yeah, he's like, come over here, let me show you something, and uh, he apparently voiced the Silver Samurai in the X, in Wolverine and the X-Men TV show, I, I watched a little bit of it, but I was a little bit too old at that point, like, I remember the, I watched the classic X-Men in the 90s, but not like this one, this one came out in like 2008 or 9, but he was the voice of the Silver Samurai in that movie, and, um, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I looked on his table. I didn't even know he was the voice of uh, Zhang Zhang in Avatar. And I was like, oh, you know, really? It breathes. It grows. Without the bender, a rock will not throw itself. And I, and I thought, I was like, well, I might as well buy an autograph since he's here. And, you know, since I saw all those people from Avatar in Colorado Springs. So I said, oh, you know, how much is it for autographs? So 60 bucks. You know, he signs the, the Zhang Zhang picture. He's like, oh, you're a fan of Avatar? I was like, yeah. I was like, I, I like both. I like Avatar and I like X-Men. He's like, oh, okay. So he signs that, and then, you know, um, then he, like, out of nowhere, he's like, hold on a second. And he's, he, he pulls out a picture of the Silver Samurai, and he signs that one, and he personalized it to me for free. So I got two autographs for the price of one, which is awesome. I, I really appreciate that. I mean, maybe he was kind of capitalizing because I was wearing an X-Men shirt, which is fine. I understand. These, these actors, they got to make their money, too, right? But it was still cool of him to give me uh, a, an autograph for free, you know? So I thought that that was really cool, and so now I have the... An autograph of the voice of uh, Zhang Zhang, um, which I like. I mean, he's been in so much stuff. Like I looked, he was in Milan. He was in all kinds of other stuff as well. So I got that signed. So then I got those two signatures before I got Trish Stratus. I took my picture with Trish Stratus. And out of all the pictures I taken, I think that was my favorite picture. <laughs> um, like she, she just is God, man. Like I'm gonna tell you right now, the pictures do not do her justice. Like she is just beautiful in person. She's just more beautiful than the pictures so yeah like so in person she's you know more beautiful than the pictures oh i guess i could have taken a second sorry um i'm heading back to the hotel now but anyway so she's more beautiful in person that was my favorite picture so yeah so i got the picture with her then i went what did i get signed um i got i got something signed by uh, kevin nash the, the wwe poster shut your mouth i got that signed by kevin nash yeah so i got that signed by kevin nash it was kind of the same thing it was like hi bye like like trish Stratus came up and said hello to him as you know the guy in front of me was getting his stuff signed so it really, really wasn't too much there so then i get i you know get my picture with uh who was it after oh uh, bam margera so i got my picture with him you know it was cool it was a nice picture and then i go and i said okay well i'm gonna go see i'm gonna go get my um, pick poster signed by Trish Stratus because she immediately went to her table to sign stuff uh, after the fact. So I get I get it signed there and it's a really good interaction with her. She's real chill. Like I think out of everybody, I would say that was my favorite interaction was Trish Stratus. Like she was just really chill. I just asked her what, what she likes about Albuquerque and tell her I came from Denver and um, you know she's coming all the way from Canada. So like this far, so like on the other side of the of North America, she's coming from. And then like I told her, you know I I, I thanked her for coming out here and. Um, and like, you know, like when she came back, that kind of made me watch, you know, wrestling again. Not not the whole program, but more her segments than when she came back, which is true. And, um, you know, she's real appreciative of that. She's just really nice. She's definitely, out of all the people I've met, she's really one of the nicest, you know, real just chill and down to earth. You know, even though she looks as great as she does, she's still really down to earth and cool. And it was kind of funny, like yesterday at the WWE panel, I don't think I recorded it, but... There was this guy, he's he's like, oh, thank you, Trish, you got me through puberty. And like, she played it off well. And I, I mean, maybe he was joking and stuff, but I just think that that's kind of like, like really, dude? Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, it's, it's not like I've never fantasized about anybody, right? Like I fantasize about celebrities, sure. But, you know, as you get up, especially as you're, you're meeting the person as you're an adult, like I understand if you're a teenager saying some stupid shit like that, but it's like, you're an adult, dude. It's like, come on. Like, it's, it's one thing if you're like, you know, whacking off to a pig. And it's another thing when, when you have the person in front of you, it's kind of like, at least be respectful because they, they came all the way down here and they don't want to hear that. I mean, I know that's kind of what sucks is I'm sure she's been subject, subjected to all kinds of shit. Now, I'm not going to say like, you know, she, you know, like she posed, you know, in provocative like lingerie and, you know, tight fitting clothes. Of course, I'm not saying that, but like what I'm saying is that there's a time and there's a place for everything, right? And if someone's, you know, especially, you know, coming all the way down here, this is her first time at Albuquerque Comic Con, you know? just like no you know like read the room dude like come on like i don't know that kind of bugged me but she just played it off so the bad thing was okay so i and then after i get that sign I says okay i'm gonna go um for my picture with booker t so i get you know my qr code ready i get ready in line 
and I walk up to them and, they, and I said, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, is Booker T lining up? And they're like, oh, well, he took his picture already. They took, they did the photo op story. I was like, what? And I was like, I have it here that, is, that, that he didn't have his photo op until 105. So I thought I could get it right now. And they're like, no, you know, he had to, apparently, I didn't even read this. Hold on. Let me, um, I'm going to pull over here so I can continue to talk. This is in my hotel, so I don't care if I show this. So I'm like, what? And then like, so they said that he took his picture early and I was like, okay, whatever. And so I double checked and I looked and it said 105, but then I go to my emails. They sent me an email at 1030 telling me, oh, well, a few people changed their photo op time because they had to leave earlier. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? Like, I couldn't, like, how was I supposed to see that? You know, like I, I was in lines. I was, you know, in the photo op line. I was getting stuff signed. So how, I didn't have time to open up my phone and to see my email. Then I go back to see if I could get a refund and I can't get a refund. I can't get a refund because under their policy, they only give you a refund if the con cancels it or if the guest cancels it. Like if, like not if they move it, which is so stupid. Like, and then even on the thing that said, oh, we'll always check your email, you know, to be sure you know when the photo op were. So then I, th I said, okay, well, I can't get the photo op there. So maybe I could go back to his table and get a selfie with him. But he was gone. You know, so he was gone, so I couldn't get a selfie with Booker T. So I got robbed out of fifty dollars, and I couldn't get a selfie, which pisses me off. That I don't think that's a reflection of the 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 convention. It's more of a reflection of the photo op company that did it, and I think that's bullshit. And you should be able to get a refund if you didn't redeem it, right? Like it's not my fault they changed it on the day last second. They changed the time of it, because I, I mean I was already in line for to get uh, Trish Stratus's autograph, which it wasn't too long, but. So it's like, I would have had to get out of that line to go, like, I don't know. I think it's stupid. And then another thing I couldn't, the only signature I didn't get was Bam Margera. And I don't know what the deal was. Like I, he, like he had a table. So obviously he was, he had a booth. So obviously he was signing stuff yesterday. When we went there, I, I circled that table two times at different times. He wasn't there. I circled it like three times a day. I circled it twice before the photo op and once right after. I just thought, oh man, well after the photo op, he'll be there. And he wasn't. And that kind of pisses me off too. Cause like, I wish it would have been clearly stated, oh, he was only here for photo ops, which I don't get, but whatever. So I guess he just took, he just did the photo op thing. Just, you know, fuck off somewhere else. <laughs> you know, I don't know. All right. So I had to move to a different spot cause I had to unload all the videos. Cause I had like no memory on my phone. Um, anyway, so yeah. So, you know, the picture with him was fine, but it's kind of disappointing that you know, I wasn't able to get the autograph. So that was the only autograph I wasn't able to get. But as my overall experience, what did I think? I think, okay, I'll tell you what, I, I also like when I did the photo ops and getting autographs, I'll tell you what that was like. I mean, probably because it was Sunday too, but I feel like the photo ops were more efficient despite, you know, it being bull crap, I wasn't able to refund it. But when I did get the photo ops, I feel like that it was well run getting the photo ops. Um, the autographs, it was way easier to get autographs in this con than, I mean, I would say out of this, this con was probably the easiest, you know, in terms of autograph wise, I really didn't have to wait too long. And if I was waiting in at most, it'd be like 15 or 20 minutes. Like, whereas other ones, it's like, you're waiting an hour or more. This was not that way. Even like Trish Chatter, so maybe it took like maybe 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. So I would say like in terms of autographs and photos, I would say that this was probably the best con in terms of we're finding where everything was. I think it was kind of a little bit difficult, but maybe not as hard as, um, as Colorado Springs Comic Con, but I think that, you know, overall the layout wasn't too bad. I would say, I'd put this clan or this con like in the middle. I would say that, I would say that, I mean, I didn't like the people and that we were being herded like cattle, but I felt as an overall, how it was run, I would say Denver Fan Expo is number one. I would say Albu Albuquerque Comic Con is number two. And I would say Colorado Springs Comic Con is number three. Now. Maybe it might have been different if I would, would have taken my time more with Colorado Springs Comic Con, but like it was easier getting through security and, and now, like I didn't even have to wait too long to get in. Like it was just real, real, real chill. And yeah, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun. I'm glad I came down here. Initially, like I remember I was initially, initially only going to come for Trish Stratus, but I'm glad that, you know, some of the other wrestlers came as well and uh, Jason Patrick and Keon Young, which is, you know, pretty cool as well that, that he came. That's, you know, pretty well, you know, that, that I was able to get that, you know, free autograph from him as well. So, you know, that experience is real cool. I also, uh, I filmed a little bit of it after, but I saw Christopher Lloyd's panel. I missed it when I was at Denver Fan Expo because I was, I was probably either waiting for Hayden or somebody. So I missed it when I went to Denver Fan Expo, but I got, I was able to see, um, the panel today. So that was great. Um, it was great to see him, you know, yeah, but like I said, out of everyone, I, I, if I didn't mention already, but 
out of everyone, I think my best experience at this con was Trish Stratus. And I would say she's probably my, maybe like top three overall that I've, out of all the cons I've been to. She was just real chill, real down to earth, and you know, she was real nice. Yeah, you know, one of my one of my favorite female wrestlers. Like, I mean, I would say like top three like female wrestlers. I would say like her, China, and Lita. Those are like my top three. But yeah, like that's like one of my, I mean, I totally don't really know. If you don't watch wrestling, you probably skip this part. But like one of my, like that's one of my favorite matches was like with her and China, even though China isn't exactly at her prime. Like she was on her way out at that point, but her and China, that's like one of my favorite matches. That's like, you know, young Trish when she's beginning. Um, her, her latest match is one of my favorites. The cage match is one of my favorites. Um, you know, obviously with Lita and with Mickey James, she had great matches against both of them as well. And she could actually wrestle. She's not just a pretty face. She could actually wrestle. It was so funny. She actually gave one of the announcers like a piggyback. <laughs> so, I mean, she's, she's pretty strong too. Overall, I had a lot of fun at this con and, you know, coming back down to New Mexico in general is just great because, you know, like I told you in the beginning that, you know, me and my sister, used to, you know, we used to spend a lot of time, you know, a lot of summers in New Mexico here visiting family. And unfortunately, a lot of them have passed away. But it's it's been years since I've been down here. It's, I think it's been what shoot, probably about almost eight years since I've been down here, and it's it's just great coming back to New Mexico. Like even though I'm, I, I was telling my sister, even though like we're on vacation, I feel like I'm. It's like my home away from home. Like I just I don't I don't feel like I'm in like a strange place, and you know it's like it's like familiar to me, but it's like a different way of experiencing it. And, you know, New Mexico always holds a special place in my heart. I mean, you know, my family's, you know, my mom, mother's side anyway is from here, you know. They've been in the, you know, they've been in the Americas for like, since like the 15 or 1600s. And they've been in, in New Mexico for like three or 400 years. So like, this is the, this is basically like the homeland, you know. And I'm just really glad and really thankful that I'm able to come here and, and enjoy this con and, you know, meet the people I did and get the stuff signed that I did, so... I hope you guys have enjoyed, you know, this whole journey. Um, there's one more uh, vlog that's going to come out of this trip. It's going to be at the Taos Pueblo, which is really important to me as well. I would say, you know, admittedly, I'm probably more Tewa than I am Apache. That's where, you know, my grandfather's side was from. And he, he would always talk about the Taos Pueblo and the city of, you know, the actual town of Taos as well. Um, him and, you know, my uncle that I've been, you know, talking to, his brother, who's been telling me the family history and stuff. And it's going to be really special to go there. I Unfortunately, I don't know if I'll be able to record it. I don't think, from what I've seen, I won't be able to. So maybe I could record, like, driving up to it or maybe as we're leaving. Um, but what I was thinking of doing was ha um, having an audio recording and maybe, like, finding different pictures of the Pueblo, kind of doing, like, a slideshow, like, with the audio. Because I guess they give tours and stuff. So um, I might record that. And then maybe have like, you know, different pictures from online as, you know, and then whatever video I can try to squeeze in between. But yeah, that's going to be real special. And, you know, basically like going, you know, I've never been to the Taos Post. So it's like going to my roots, basically. So thank you guys for watching this, you know, with the con. And um, hopefully you'll check out the other videos as well. You know, other, you know, like the petroglyphs and the balloon museum and the Taos Pueblo. So yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.